Hello, all you wonderful Rise of Kingdoms players out there. This is Dragothian here. Today, we're going to continue our Commander Ranker series for Legendary Commanders, and this is going to be for Cavalry Commanders. We're going to be breaking down the top 10 for each role inside of Rise of Kingdoms for Cavalry Commanders that are legendary in this game. Let's go ahead and hop over. I'll see you on the other side. All right, here we go. We've got Commander Ranking Order for Cav players. And what we're going to be doing is breaking down the open field roll first off. Then we're going to be jumping into the rally roll. And then finally, we're going to end it with the garrison roll for Cav Commanders. And we can do that because Rise of Kingdoms has seen fit to go ahead and bring all three of those roles to all of the troop type commanders with the exception ish of siege units. Now I've got my camera down because I need you to be able to see the whole screen. I need you to be able to see all of the data that we're about to start throwing up on the screen for you here in just a moment. Let's go ahead and get started. Again, we're going to start with the open field list ranking order from bottom to top. Number 10 is double C Sao Sao. Only reason you should be having him for open field or for two reasons on the open field. We've got for arc purposes for running the arc. And then we've also got for farm killing. This could also be for running around to quick capture buildings in arc, things like that. He is usable in that regard, but this list is going to be for main engagements on the open field. You don't want to be bringing double C to the open field when you are trying to cause as much damage as possible. That's not what double C is for. He is for mobility. That's why he's got the mobility talent tree. And that's also going to lead us to the number nine selection. Jadwiga, who is also a mobility cav commander, but she is a garrison commander as well. And for the same purposes for arc and farm killing, Jadwiga is number nine. Now, Jadwiga has a few more nicer skill sets that she can choose that are more beneficial on the field, in my opinion, than double C. So that's why I've ranked her just a smidge above of double C. Number eight, Minamoto. Now he's taken a little bit of a tumble from my previous lists, and it's not necessarily that he's gotten worse. It's just that your selection has just gotten better. Okay, so Minamoto is completely paid to win when it comes to acquiring him. He is accessed from the VIP chests whenever you're ranking up your VIP level inside of Rise of Kingdoms. And you don't want to just half-ass it. I mean, you can, I guess, technically do that. 5 one, 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 and, you know, you can have a little something to play with. But if you actually want to use him as a main player in your account, either get him and max him, or don't really use him. I mean, that's just kind of my recommendation. You don't really want to use him unless he's maxed. And that's why he's number eight. Number seven, we have Takeda. Now he's a little lower on the list than I would think that I would have placed him. But again, there's a reason for this. There's other Cav commanders that are legendary that are, in my opinion, just better. Takeda does a lot of things really well. He's super defensive. He's got heal. He's got movement speed. He's got a lot of things going for him, but he just doesn't put out a whole lot of damage. A lot of his damage is because he's giving debuffs out to the target that he's hitting so that others can bring damage to, towards that target. So for this reason, I've got Takeda at number seven. As far as his minimum effective, most effective minimum is five, 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 one, and max is best. The fourth skill maxed and his expertise is actually quite nice, but he again is serviceable at five, 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 one, especially for open field. Number six, and I just did a video on this, is Attila. Now, we did a video for open field Attila, why he's good, why he's not. He's not great for all open field purposes. And again, you want to be using Attila with Takeda. That's his best pairing in any, any situation whatsoever. You can use other commanders as a secondary to Attila, but they're just not as effective. Um, it's been tried. It's been theorized. It's been debunked. You just Your best bet is Attila and Takeda. This is going to give you a great pairing for causing a lot of severely wounded, but you're not going to be doing a whole lot for the rest of your marches. And you're certainly not going to be causing a major impact for your alliance or your group of players 
that you are playing with on the open field. Minimum 5155 for Attila, by the way, because his second skill is a rally skill. Max, of course, is best in general. Number five, we have one Genghis Khan. And again, the reason why he is number five is because he's built for the open field. His main reason is to pump out as much damage as possible. And if you can hide him and or macro him around the battlefield and not get stuck and swarmed, he causes a ton of damage. But that's the problem, right? Genghis Khan out in the open without any kind of support is going to instantly get nuked down. So that's why he's not higher on this list because from a raw damage standpoint, he is one of the highest damage commanders from a cav standpoint and really in the game he can pump out quite a bit of damage but minimum five five one one for Genghis on the open field max is obviously better and really if you're going to use Genghis Khan a lot on the battlefield you have to max him because his damage quite literally goes up by 30 percent or more depending on how your RNG is because of his expertise, double using his primary active skill on firing his main skill off. You've got to have him maxed if you're going to be doing anything super effective on the field with Genghis Khan. Number four, Chandra Gupta Moria. Minimum 5155. Max is best, of course. Again, his second skill is a rally skill, so technically you don't have to have it. But again, you want that expertise. You want the expertise on the open field as well. That helps out a lot. It increases your blessings that you get from Chandra Gupta. And again, that's always a good thing. That's always gonna be the best way to do it. Chandra Gupta pumping out a ton of damage, a ton of debuff, a ton of survivability. He just does a lot of things really well. That's why he is ranked number four. Number three, we have Zhang Yu. And again, he could rank a little higher on this list, everyone. But unfortunately, he has a little bit of the same problem that Genghis Khan has in the sense that he is not quite as durable as maybe some of the other commanders that are going to be on this list on number two and number one. And that for that reason, not to mention the fact that he is also an instant target whenever you see a Zhang Yu on the field, just as you see a, a Genghis Khan on the open field, you instantly target that uh, commander because of how much damage he pumps out and because of his debuff that he pops out and AOE defense debuff is incredible to have on the open field. And that's why you would want to target him very quickly. But he is also number three because he is so good. You have to have him out there. You just have to protect him. You got to give him a little bit of love. You know what I'm saying? Number two, we have Saladin and he is an early ish commander. You can get him KBK two very early in the game, but he is just so damn good. He is ranked number two on this list. He does a lot of things well. He's super durable. He pumps out a ton of damage. He's fairly fast if you're moving through buildings and uh, farming nodes because of hasty departure. The support tree is incredible. We did a video, by the way, where you see the support tree getting enhanced by commanders that double cast their primary skill. We just went over on number five, Genghis Khan. His expertise double casts his primary skill, a classic pairing. Saladin with Genghis Khan is a fantastic pairing to utilize that. And again, number two on the list, Saladin, because of his effectiveness and versatility and utility. And that leaves number one, my boy, William, my bearded boy, the conquest of Normandy. William is number one on the list for open field. He just does so much so well. He has AOE damage. That's very, very top tier. He's got an AOE buff for everybody around you or your own marches, depending on how many you have left. He's got speed. He's got the attack tree, which isn't bad. Not great, not bad. And he also works for so many other phases of this game. That's why he is ranked number one on the field. The more of these you have on the field, the better your group will be at field fighting. And again, that will help you achieve victory. All right, let's go to the next one, which is for rallies. Number 10, rally, cav commander, legendary, is again double C. Double C for rallies is bad. 
Not to mention the fact that he's a peacekeeping mobility commander. You can use him as a secondary and it's not the worst. The problem is he hurts himself with a negative defense debuff because of his expertise. Now, if you don't have him expertise and somehow, some way you got him to where you got all these skills that are not the peacekeeping skill to five, it's not as bad, but still just don't do it. You saw the commanders that we just went over on this list. You have better options. So just don't. Number nine, Jodwiga. Same thing. She's great for a very particular purpose, and we'll get to that on the next list here. But just don't. She's just not made for rallying. She has a couple things that would work really well, but all the other commanders do those same things better with better things to boot on top of it. Minamoto at number eight again. Either max or nothing, just like we talked about on open field. He is, especially early in the game, KBK1, early before KBK1, when you're trying to establish your kingdom, and even a little bit in KBK2, depending on the size of your kingdom, Mina is definitely a top tier rally commander, but he's just not as good as some of the other stuff. And again, this is for the masses. This is not for KBK1 only. This is not for KBK2 only. So I have to put him at number eight, even though he is good, especially in the early game, because you don't have access to these later commanders. He's just not as good as the newest ones that are out. Number seven, I've got Genghis Khan. And again, you must max him because of the expertise. And I, I'm a little more stringent on what you're able to use these commanders as for rally pairs, because when you're rallying, you're not just risking your own troops, you're risking your allies' troops. And when we're rallying, we're talking dead troops. We're not talking severely wounded. That means they're gone forever. They've bit the dust. They've said goodbye to their families. And because of that, you want to be bringing the best. You want to have the highest VIP tier. You want to have the best gear. And you want to have the most damage and the most survivability. And one thing Genghis Khan lacks is survivability. When you're rallying, you're basically being attacked the entire time. And again, we talked about in the open field, if you can get it to where you can have your Genghis Khan attacking something else and not getting attacked in return, and it's just receiving counterattack damage, you're going to be in good shape. But if you get targeted, you're screwed. And that's what a rally is, is you're getting targeted by the garrison. So that is why Genghis Khan is number seven. Number six, we have Saladin. Now, again, I would have loved to have pushed him up this list. But for rallying, we're talking about the metas, right? We're talking about Jadwiga YSS. We're talking about Zeno YSS, Zeno Theodora, YSS Theodora. And Saladin just isn't it. His combination of skills works really well for almost everything in this game, but there are commanders on this list that are specifically made for rallying purposes in Rise of Kingdoms. And while Saladin is a conquering style commander, it's more for early game than it is for late game. Number five, we have Takeda. And really, let me open it up to Attila as well, because you don't rally with Takeda unless it's with Attila. So four and five are basically four A, four B. And before I go forward, Saladin, your minimum is five, 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 one. Max is best for the extra damage, the extra skill damage reduction and all that good stuff. But Attila and Takeda, you gotta have as a pair for rallying. You gotta have Attila maxed by the way, because he just won't be as effective without that uh, rallying skill maxed out. Takeda, you can get away with five, 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 one, but really, again, we talked about this. You should have a maxed, the maxed fourth skill and his expertise does add quite a bit of damage to a rally. You got to have them both maxed, in my opinion, to be a rallier with Attila Takeda, but they're also the fourth best and fifth best on this list. And really the four a -th and four b -th of this list, if you want to think about it that way. Number three, we have William. And really, let's go ahead and, again, open up the top three. We have William at three, Chandra Gupta at two, and Zhang Yu at one. Zhang Yu is the number one rallying commander for cavalry in this game, and it's not even close. You got to have Zhang Yu if you're going to be rallying with cavalry in Rise of Kingdoms, especially post KBK3 in Season of Conquest. Zhang Yu should be your primary. Now, you can get away with using William with Zhang Yu as a rallying commander pair and do fairly well. I'd say 80%, 80% 80 
85 to 80 to 85 percent effectiveness with that pair, which is why William is number three. William needs to be 5551 minimum, and maximum is certainly best. But the best pair in Rise of Kingdoms for rallying with cavalry commanders is going to be Zhang Yu and Chandragupta Maurya. And again, they both need to be maxed. All the skills are effective when you are rallying. You've got to have those maxed out. And again, top tier gear, high VIP level, etc., etc. You want to have all that stuff in spades, best city skins, everything. Zhang Yu and Chandragupta, number one and two, with William as a secondary. Good for counter rallies with Zhang Yu, good for secondary flags with Zhang Yu, especially if you have a target that isn't necessarily going to be having the top tier metas. All right, let's do Garrison, and then we'll wrap up the video. Garrison, number 10. Do we have an idea? William. William is number 10, and do you know why? Half of his skills, including his expertise, is while on the open field. And thank you, by the way, for the new subscribe there, Gonzalo. William, only his first two skills work inside of a garrison. His third skill, his fourth skill, and his expertise are all while on the field, while on the map. That means that garrison situations, you cannot use those skills. They don't apply. You're effectively using a heavily 60% neutered William inside of a garrison. Just don't do it. Zhang Yu. At number nine, oh my goodness. Well, it's kind of the same reason. His third and fourth skills are for rally and for open field. And again, maxing does bring another skill to the table. His max expertise does bring another skill. But again, same principle as William. Zhang Yu is made for rally and for open field. 5511 or max only will work here. And again, if you max them, you're still only bringing two skills and an expertise to a garrison. It doesn't make sense to have him in the open field. And again, he's just squishy. He doesn't have a whole lot of defensiveness there. And again, in garrison, you want to have as much defense as possible, health, survivability, etc. Number nine, I think you guys thought I was going to start with this, but oddly enough, really, he's got three skills as well, and they're pretty good. They're pretty darn good. You've got his primary skill being a pretty decent nuke. You've got everything but his peacekeeping skill adding to the benefits of his his ability and garrison. And even though his expertise is a little bit of a damage debuff or defense debuff, it does have a damage buff. So I think that edged Zhang Yu out just a little bit, which is why I've got him at number eight. But again, just don't use these guys. He's so squishy. That's why I've got so squishy. And just move on to number seven and above. Number seven, Mina, either max or nothing. Again, same principle. We've already gone through that at length. Again, Minamoto in the garrison situation can work, you know, can kind of work. But again, he's not made for that. Um, and again, he just doesn't have the extras that a lot of the latest generation commanders, even a Zhang Yu and a William, you know, they've got those first two skills that work, but they're just not enough. Mina has all the skills with the exception of his peacekeeping skill that will work. But again, they're just not as good, which is why he's at number seven. Number six, Genghis Khan, minimum 5511, max is best. Again, you should be using him as max if you're using him in garrison. But again, you don't really need to be using him in garrison here. He's going to pump out some damage, but he's going to go down so quick, so, so quick, that that's why he's number six. Number five, Chandra Gupta, for the same reasons that he's really good on the open field, he will actually work decently well on the garrison role. 5155, five, five, because again, his second skill is a rally skill or max because the max uh, expertise that he brings to the table is so critical. But again, not really the best for Garrison, but he will work in a pinch, especially paired with the top two commanders in the game. Number four, we have Takeda. And really, again, when we talk about Cav, right, and we say Takeda or Attila, it's really Attila and Takeda. They're just not made to be with anybody else. Attila and Takeda, as, as a Garrison combo, in a pinch is actually not bad, especially if you have full cav inside of that garrison. There is some skills there, obviously, that are rally only.
but it doesn't matter. They're just that good. In fact, before Season of Conquest was even a thing, and Attila Takeda was so OP on the open field, Attila and Takeda as a garrison was actually your best garrison by far. That was the best garrison against Attila Takeda was Attila Takeda. And then you had Charles Constantine and all that stuff too. But this worked really well. The problem with using Attila Takeda as garrison and rally was the fact that everybody just ran out of cav. Otherwise, it would have just been a complete Attila Takeda versus Attila Takeda fest, and then everybody would have just imploded all their calf. But it does work in a pinch. If you've got full calf and a structure, arc, open field, KBK, doesn't matter. It will work. It's just not the best. Number two is Saladin. And again, must max because of the extra damage that you get from his maxing and all the other bonuses. Reason I say Saladin number two People are actually using Saladin with YSS and Saladin with Chandra as a garrison pair in the meta, in the meta right now against XY and Chandra and against uh, Ramses and Nebu. Now this can obviously change once Gilgamesh and Amanatori come out, but still it's anti-archer and it's anti-skill damage. And that's what the new pairs are that are coming out. This could actually be the new best pairing against the Archer Commanders besides Jadwiga. Saladin with YSS could actually work really, really well. We'll see. We'll have to do some testing. But Saladin, number two on the garrison list because he is just so versatile. He's so good. And again, everything that's coming at you is heavy skill damage, which is what Saladin counters. And even if it's a Tilla Takeda, you can do Saladin Takeda. And we did that in KVK3 before Season of Conquest, and it worked very, very well too. And number one, we have Jadwiga rounding out the top of the list here. Must max as well. You got to have her max. She's mainly for this purpose. You, you use Jadwiga as a Cav Garrison Commander. And again, this is too, it's supposed to heavily counter the Archer rallies in the game. And it's a massive, massive difference between using Jadwiga YSS and Xeno YSS against Ramsey's Nebu and maybe even against Gilgamesh Nebu or whatever the pairings are that we're going to start seeing from the archers with the new set. But that being said, Jawiga is number one. And again, it's not even close for Cav. She is your top tier with Saladin being your next. I'd say it's kind of close with Saladin. Saladin's that good, guys. Uh, but then everything else is kind of like mid-tier with Attila Takeda, and then everything else is kind of garbage. So with that being said, Jadwiga is your number one. Let's jump back in the studio and let's wrap the video up. All right, everybody. So again, that was the list. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We went over the open field. We went over the rallies. We went over the garrison rolls for your legendary Cav commanders. And again, I hope that's been helpful for you. Whatever you're looking for inside of that, that tells you your minimum requirements, for all the commanders, for all the roles, and your ideal best obviously being max. And some of them you just don't have to max. That's kind of cool. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe before you leave and go watch another one of my videos. Take it easy. I'll see you later. Cheers and have a good one.